Okay, um, now we get into the main part of the wall. And um, once again, you'll see a kind of eclectic mixture of African ancestors. And um, I'll tell you a little again about why some of these were chosen. Very first here is Eve. Eve, the mother of humanity. Now I know a lot of people in this group already know that humanity started on the African continent Amen. roughly 200,000 years ago. And everyone who's come out of there, whether they're Irish, Mexican, or whatever, of course, have come out of the womb of an African woman eventually, over time. That's right. And uh, this is important because uh, the religion, of course, is very heavy here, the Christianity, and they have visions of these white Eves and Adams uh, just floating in their head and in their literature. Yes, yes. So I always have to explain to them that 200,000 years ago, this is where it all started, yes. in African continent. And uh, there was no one on earth that looked like the one in your book 200,000 years ago. They had not evolved, or maybe devolved, whichever you want to say, uh, at that, to that point, you understand. So we always have to start with Eve, let you know the mother of humanity, and that flows in your blood. That's who you are. You populated the world. There's no way you can be inferior Thank you. to your well, children. You're the start. Okay, so I get a lot of pushback on that from that lot of that group. I won't from this because you all kind of understand. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, we move on to Chinua Chibi. Uh, I just heard a sister mentioning Things Fall Apart, which is probably his most uh, popular book. Uh, Chinua Chibi is a brilliant writer. Uh, a lot of you, I'm sure, have seen other books, Ant Hills of the Savannah, Man of the People, you know, just, a, just so much. But in addition to that, you know, he was a, he had the vision of making sure Africans understood what they had pre-colonial. It's very important. So you read the books and you realize, yes, we are, are an organized people. Yes, we had organized tradition. We weren't in any trouble before they came. And really, if you read European history, when they came to Africa, they said, these people are not in any trouble. You know, now it changed, but it, when they came, they didn't see societies that were disorganized and falling apart and all that. Things fall apart. In that book he was really talking about from a cultural standpoint how their culture was being transplanted by European Christianity when it came into the nation. So we give him, and he was also an Igbo, uh, so he was an ambassador for Biafra. Some of you may remember they had the Biafra Wars from 67 to 70 and uh, that's a, a, another long story, but he was also an ambassador for that. And of course, his book, Things Fall Apart, is required reading in just about every literature course in the world for the last 25, 30 years. Okay, Bobby Asa Hilliard. Every, who all knows Asa? I knew. A lot of people would know Bobby Asa. Bobby Asa got a lot of us on this road. Yeah, he did. I was 19 years old, thinking I was kind of a black radical. You know, you know I mean, black power. And I heard... Bob Asa do free your mind, return to the source. Hey. And I walked out of that place like I was drunk. <laughs> I didn't know what happened. Tell it. And he sent me handwritten, because we're talking 1979 or something now, uh -huh. 80, uh -huh. handwritten bibliography, you know, notes and everything to where to start reading. And I know he's done that so thousands and thousands of people. So, so many of uh, Garvey's cubs are out here, but we got a lot of Asa cubs out here too. And we always give praise an honor to Baba Asa Hilliard. The name and, Nana Bafour. Uh huh. Uh, because he was installed as a chief here in Ghana. Yes, he was. That's and, why I put Ghana too, but I couldn't. Quite oh my goodness, to get all of this stuff there. He's one of my guiding, leading ancestors right now. I have to bear witness. Right. Nana Bafour, Asa Grant Hilliard the third, took me to Kemet. I got my right mind back from that. And uh, one of the brothers asked me for a reading list of Nana Bafour's books, which you might be able to help me with. I have the one of the Maroons. Uh -huh. But coming out of Atlanta, Georgia, U.S., I would be not be sass if I didn't acknowledge my Nana. All right. I received his returns when he came back after he transitioned. I never forget it because I never did anything like that before. But because he took me to Kemet, Nile Valley, uh, I think it was a dozen years ago, his wife, Mayor Patsy Joe Hilliard out of East Point, Georgia, Nana Asa Grant Hilliard III, his family, all of those in Atlanta right now, 
the, the school is there after him in honor of him. But when he came back, I, I have to say this, and I'm gonna make sure I come back. However, when he came home, I've never to this day been or seen anything like it in North America. When, when he came back, that was the last time I saw Doc Ben. And when Doc Ben came into the room, I was there. Oh my goodness to gracious, everybody was there, remember? It was a two day. We, we do, we, we know who and whose we are and Nana Bafu and all of the uh, Association of African Civilization, right when he transitioned in ancient Kemet, where he, you could see it in the last video. Mm -hmm. He was being who he's being, our Nana Bafu, here, you know, in this region. And I, I just thank God for him. We can say his name, Nana Bafu. Nana One more time, Nana Bafu. Nana, Nana, ah, Nana, Bafu. Yeah, we speak their names. So they live. Ashe? Ashe. Thank you. Okay. I was wondering what they were doing. Okay, so we could talk forever. That's why I said these things can go on for a long time if we let them. Uh, but that's Baba Isa. Yeah, uh, Santiwa. You all will learn more about. You all going to Kumasi, you know? Yes. You go to Kumasi. Uh, you know, she's Queen um, Ejisu. So I think I don't know if you go to Ejisu, but you know. Uh, so she we definitely was, pass by her statue okay, every single by time. By her statue every it's, single time. I won't go too much about it other than to say this warrior queen stood up to the British, uh, influenced and impacted her men into fighting. Uh, for the liberation, continued liberation of the Ashante uh, Empire, and um, you'll learn a lot more about it if you go uh, up north. So I'll save that for the rest of your trip. But uh, make sure they have you read her presentation, her speech, or at least the excerpt of it, to the African men who are on the fence about fighting the British at that time. Make sure they read that to you. And uh, sometimes I read it here for the young, young ladies. But the girls in Ghana kind of know about Ya Santua, but sometimes I read it anyway just to get the force. <laughs>